This 7 and 4 News special report, Arlington Cemetery Forever Here, is brought to you commercial free by Kuwaitan Care. Arlington represents uh, really the service and the sacrifice of the entire military uh, throughout our nation's history. From its beginning in the Civil War um, all the way to now, the, the, the tapestry of America is painted by people who are, are buried and interred here in Arlington National Cemetery. Everybody buried here is a hero. Everybody may not be known to everybody around the country as to exactly what it is that they did in uniform. Some of them were drafted into uniform, a lot of them came in as volunteers, but they came when the country needed them the most. The most anyone can ever give for their country is their life. And so that is what's remembered here. Every gravestone here is notable. Every person buried here has contributed to uh, the history of the United States. If America, as a nation, had a hall of honor, not of fame, but rather a place where service, sacrifice, integrity, and patriotism were paramount, it would be Arlington National Cemetery. Good evening, I'm Mark Shillette. This fall, I had the opportunity to spend a week at Arlington, a place where the story of our country is told, one headstone, one soldier, one life at a time. In the next half hour, we're gonna take you behind the scenes of our nation's largest cemetery. You'll attend a funeral for seven Marines that was more than 60 years in the making. Airmen who were thought lost forever now laid to rest with full military honors. We'll introduce you to an amazing group of volunteers who attend thousands of funerals a year. They're called the Arlington Ladies. Their mission is to make sure that no one is ever buried at Arlington without someone there to pass along the gratitude of our nation. You'll meet one of the guards who walks the plaza at the Tomb of the Unknowns. It's a tradition and an honor that has taken place every hour, every day, for more than half a century. And we'll show you how Arlington, a place so rich in history, such a reflection of our past, is taking a dramatic step into the future, an effort that required photographing and mapping hundreds of thousands of headstones. But in order to truly understand Arlington today, you have to understand its past, its history. The story of Arlington begins 200 years ago with a home. It sits high above the cemetery today, but it was built by relatives of George Washington as a tribute to the man who may be most responsible for the creation of our nation. Through marriage, that home ended up in the hands of the man who may have posed the greatest threat to our nation. Well, the house that you're looking at is Arlington House, the Robert E. Lee Memorial. It was the pre-Civil War home of General Robert E. Lee. It sits high above what has become Arlington National Cemetery. But it was this home's high perch above what would become our nation's capital that made it perhaps one of the most significant trophies in the Civil War. One of the first things the U.S. Army does is crosses the Potomac and they seize Alexandria and Arlington Heights. Because from this position, and as you look off towards D.C., uh, if you know, the Confederates would have occupied this ground with artillery, they could have brought the White House under direct fire. The day that General Robert E. Lee signed his papers pledging his support to the South, he sealed the fate of the plantation he had called home for decades. He was viewed as a Benedict Arnold, as a traitor. And in fact, during the war, the government would do that. They would seize the property and then put this national cemetery around the house, largely to keep him from ever living here again and to hold him responsible for the deaths of these thousands and thousands of U.S. soldiers who died fighting against his army. It's hard to imagine what would become some of our nation's most hallowed ground was born out of an act of revenge. But that, coupled with an overwhelming need for burial space for thousands of Civil War casualties, 
is what led to the creation of a national cemetery here. The first official military burial was in May of 1864, when William Christman was laid to rest. Thousands would soon follow, some in places revered by the Lees. And over time, the cemetery increases in size, but the, the big one, of course, then is in 1866, when the Civil War unknowns are buried around Mrs. Lee's Rose Garden, uh, right here by the Arlington House. The cemetery served a necessity, but also, not lost in history, sent a message. Over time, the message changed from revenge to reconciliation. Beginning in the late 1890s and certainly into the early 1900s, uh, Arlington becomes a symbol of reconciliation. The Confederate Memorial is constructed and uh, certainly by 1915, it's the, the monument is completed and it's a way to embrace not only the, the federal dead uh, of the Civil War, but also the Confederate dead. And because of that, I think it shows that in the nation at large, there's a move to, uh, to reconcile post-Civil uh, War. But Arlington is a, is a microcosm of that, and you see that among the dead here at Arlington. As the nation healed, the honor of being buried here grew. So really by the 1950s, uh, late 1950s, 1958 or so, I think Arlington is a, a very popular place for uh, honored dead, you know, our veterans to, to be buried, regardless of where the families are residing. I think the last thing that really changes that popularity uh, is the death of President Kennedy. When President Kennedy is buried here just down from uh, the Arlington House with a clear line of sight uh, across the Memorial Bridge and towards the Lincoln Memorial and the Washington Monument, I think that certainly also raises public awareness of, of Arlington. Telling the tale of Arlington National Cemetery is more complex than names and dates. These headstones tell the story of our country. It's so complex because you really are telling the history of this nation from its foundings in the American Revolution to today. And as you walk through, not only are you dealing with you know, 200 plus years of history, but it's also the individual stories. And every gravestone here is notable. Every person buried here has contributed to uh, the history of the United States. What was once General Lee's plantation was transformed over time into fields of history and heroes. But his house remains preserved, essentially unchanged. It's been declared a national monument like those for George Washington and Abraham Lincoln. But the Arlington House holds a unique distinction. It's the only national monument to honor a man who fought against the United States. When you walk among the hundreds of thousands of headstones and markers at Arlington, it's as if that history comes alive. It's easy to forget that this is, in fact, a working cemetery. Every day, there are 25 to 30 burials. Some in Section 60 are casualties from our current conflicts in Iraq and Afghanistan. Others are veterans who served decades ago. One of the days I was at Arlington, I was invited to one of those burial services. It was unique in that seven United States Marines were being laid to rest more than 60 years after they died. Every day at Arlington National Cemetery, there are moments that take your breath away that make you realize that this is a special place. A place where tradition meets honor, even if it's almost 70 years delayed. We're here today to bury seven soldiers who died in 1944 on the island of Vanuatu in World War II. Their plane crashed. For Marilyn Claussen and nearly 100 other family members, this day was a long time in the making. A homecoming for seven United States Marines who were thought lost forever when their plane crashed in World War II. At the time, the family was told their loved ones were lost in the Pacific and that the remains couldn't be recovered. That was the reality the families lived with for more than half a century, until one day, 
thousands of miles away, a discovery. Accidentally, while people were going through the jungle, they came upon the wreckage of the plane. The dog tags, there were dog tags that were found, but the names had been worn off of them. They cross-matched our DNA with their DNA bones that they had found, and as a result, they, they were all cross-matched, and we are all together today. The remains of seven Marines share a single casket as they're laid to rest with full military honors. I know I can speak for all of us. We all have that wonderful closure. So today is not a day of grief. It's, it's a day of celebration that we have all of our soldiers together, seven family members together, and now we know we can carry on. Closure for all. But for Marilyn, whose loved one, Corporal Jack Yeager, perished, she received a little something more than the other families. During the dig, uh, the JPAC uh, did, had sifting. They had to sift uh, through tiny little pieces of metal. And during that dig, they found his ring. And it's his wedding band. It's inscribed. And it's Jack and Helen. June 20th, 1941. In a very real way, Marilyn carried that ring like she carried her memories of Jack here to his final resting place. Closure, homecoming, honor. Arlington is such a sacred, uh, uh, holy ground to me. And knowing that I can come back and visit all of them here, and he's so close to us. That's going to be a, a, a wonderful day for, for all of us. We'll never forget this day. Every burial service, like every service member at Honors, is unique, memorable, or special for their own reasons. But there are some common threads, the pomp and circumstance, traditions, a bugler to play taps, a firing party, a flag-draped casket, and if you pay close attention, a lady. She's an official part of the ceremony. After the family is presented with that perfectly folded flag, she appears and she passes them an envelope. She is by title, an Arlington lady. On behalf of the Army Arlington ladies and our entire Army family, I express to you and your family our deepest sympathy. It is hard. It's, uh, I've had funerals where y it's, you come to tears. We're so very grateful that he chose to serve and sacrifice in defense of our precious freedom. We soften that scene. We're, we, we soften it because we're just another member of the family. One day, your heartache will be overshadowed by the memories. It is an honor and a privilege for me to be your Navy Arlington lady. They just like to see us there. We, we had a more human touch, I guess, but it's personal touch. When they open that letter, it just reinforces that feeling that we hope they got that they were loved and someone was there to show them how important their loved one's service and sacrifice was to our Air Force and our country. With each pen stroke, the hands of an Arlington lady pour out the heartfelt emotions of a grateful nation. The ladies, volunteers who represent each branch of the service, craft a handwritten note for the next of kin. Just one of the things they do to add a personal touch to a day that for many families is one of the hardest of their lives. It's very hard. I've, I've um, had tears in my eyes, and, and they do too, and I think they, they understand that, and we meet them at that, that uh, point, and we're also able to talk with them, which I love. We talk with them before the funeral, so they, they know and it's, we're consistent. We see them before the funeral, and we are at the gravesite, so I think that's comforting to them also. It's that expression of love and support that actually was the impetus for the creation of the Arlington Ladies. Back in the 1940s, General Hoyt Vandenberg and his wife would walk through the cemetery. 
They noticed Airman being buried with no family present, only the bugler and the firing party. Mrs. Vandenberg thought that was incredibly sad. So she determined that since they were airmen, she was their family. And she began to attend the Air Force funerals at Arlington Cemetery. Quickly, she realized that that was a huge job she was taking on, so she recruited her friends to attend for her. Those friends became the Arlington ladies. And what proudly started with the Air Force spread to every branch of the military. What they do hasn't changed much over the years and neither has the need. Our motto is that no soldier will ever be buried out here alone. Many times there can be just the Arlington lady, the chaplain, cemetery rep, and that's it. And I would say they're the most meaningful. Now, unfortunately, it's more often than you might think. And there are reasons. Sometimes the family can't get here. Sometimes the next of kin is very elderly and can't travel. Unfortunately, there are times when the family can't afford to come. So an Arlington lady comes, sometimes to make sure that no one is buried here alone, and other times so that no family leaves here feeling lonely. It's a bond that often lasts long after the fading of taps. We had a lady who buried her husband here, and every year on their wedding anniversary, she would write the Arlington lady and say, could you please put a rose on my husband's grave? It is for our 45th, 46th, 47th anniversary. And so when we found out that that year coming up was going to be their 50th wedding anniversary, we put a bouquet of red roses on his grave and we sent her a bouquet of red roses. The pomp and the circumstance is what the family expects. The personal touch, that's always a surprise for them. So how many services do the Arlington ladies attend? Well, to put it in perspective, last year alone, the Army Arlington ladies attended more than 2,000 funerals. I asked the ladies, what are the hardest funerals, the ones where they really have to fight back the tears? I expected them to say the ones involving our current active duty servicemen and women, the ones where they have to pass that note to a young child as the next of kin. But their answer surprised me. They said some of the hardest funerals are actually the ones where they're there to support a widow who has lost her husband of 60 years, a wife who's lost her partner, her rock for so much of her life. While the Arlington ladies provide a certain sense of softness and tenderness just up the hillside from where burial services are held, is the Tomb of the Unknown Soldiers. There you can witness firsthand the formality and seriousness of what Arlington and our military stand for. In the tomb are the unidentified remains from both World Wars, Korea. Next to that tomb, every hour of every day, you'll find a guard who stands watch over soldiers known only to God. All up! My dedication to this sacred duty is total and wholehearted. In the responsibility bestowed on me, never will I falter. And with dignity and perseverance, my standard will remain perfection. Through the years of diligence and praise and the discomfort of the elements, I will walk my tour in humble reverence to the best of my ability. It is he who commands the respect I protect, his bravery that made us so proud. Surrounded by well-meaning crowds by day, alone in the thoughtful peace of night, this soldier will in honored glory rest under my eternal vigilance. It is a creed they live by, a call to duty they answer. This unknown soldier here, you know, fall for our freedom. So the least we could do is, you know, guard a tomb for him. And guard they have. Select members of the Army's 3rd Infantry Regiment have stood their watch at the Tomb of the Unknowns 24 hours a day. 365 days a year since they took over the duties back in 1948. It is a goal every time. Uh, we strive for perfection. Perfection for Sergeant Eric McGuire and other members of the so-called Old Guard comes in many forms. Perfect steps, a perfect uniform, a perfect ceremony, perfection. Anything less would be disrespectful for the unknown men they stand watch over. 
You know, throughout my military career, I heard, uh, you know, tomb guards, they're the best. So that's what I wanted to be a part of. Uh, I got stationed in Fort Campbell, Kentucky. Uh, once I got there, I was shipped to Afghanistan for my first deployment. On my second tour in Afghanistan, I was getting ready to re-enlist, and uh, I was offered the option of the old guard. And, um, you know, I, I would never imagine, you know, a couple years ago back at Fort Campbell that I would ever have the opportunity to come to the old guard or, you know, much less be at the tomb of the unknown soldier. Sergeant McGuire walks the plaza on marble that can't hide the wear marks of those who preceded him, rust left behind by the soles of their perfectly polished shoes. Every moment, every detail, a reflection of what it took to get him here. Just so you have to go through a tryout process, which is a, a two week phase. Um, and you get the breakdown of like working on your uniforms, plaza training, um, tune knowledge. And if, you know, after the evaluation, you know, if you have what it takes, you're um, offered a position down with the, the platoon. And um, then you start training which can take six to nine months. Well, our normal days are 26 hour shifts. We come in at 05 in the morning, we do PT, and uh, we uh, work on our uniforms and get ready for the day. Once we start the day, we, we conduct the guard change sequence and have guards out on the mat on the plaza, you know, at all times. After the day ends, we also pull guard duty nights. All day, all night. The old guard stands watch, back and forth, protecting the honor of soldiers known only to God. Because of the development of DNA testing, the unknown soldier from the Vietnam War was recently exhumed and identified. It's that DNA identification technology that may mean there will never be another unknown soldier buried at Arlington. Well, the Tomb of the Unknowns isn't the only place where technology is having an impact. As much as Arlington is a place where we can look back, the cemetery recently found itself with a real need to look towards its future. Antiquated record keeping, constantly changing paper maps, and a flood of new data being processed in the same way that they had been doing it for more than a century. Arlington needed to go digital, and yes, there is now an app for that. It's important to me because we're providing a service to the family, and so uh, we view technology as a way uh, to enhance the experience here at Arlington National Cemetery. There is no doubt part of the Arlington experience is supposed to be overwhelming. Row after row of gleaming white headstones, seemingly never-ending lines of sacrifice and service. And every day, those lines are made a little longer. We conduct over 7,000 uh, burials a year over uh, 27 to 30 burials a day. In order to update uh, our records every day and every year, we're creating 7,000 new burial records and updating the map 7,000 uh, times a year. Conducting that many burials a year is a big job, but day-to-day -day planning and being able to pinpoint each one of the more than 400,000 headstones for a visitor, that is a major undertaking. At Arlington, we have over 70 map sheets, each with roughly between three and 5,000 grave sites, um, you would go to then the section uh, where they said their loved one was buried and you would literally trace your finger over uh, the burial plot maps where it had each plot individually labeled and then on a larger map you would basically put a pinpoint on a, a you know copy that the family member could take with them uh, to give them in the general direction of their, their loved one's grave site knowing full well that once they got out there um, it still may be a little challenging to find exactly how that paper map that you, sh you saw in the visitor center translated to the ground. The bottom line, if you come to Arlington to find a specific headstone, maybe that of a loved one, you're going to have to deal with two things. First, a series of antiquated paper maps that were constantly being changed and updated. And second, you were probably in for a lot of walking and searching in an attempt to translate what was flat and straight on paper into the rolling curved world. We knew there was a lot uh, of improvements and enhancements that needed to be made. Arlington had relied on a paper-based system for decades, but something had to change. The cemetery, for their own purposes, needed real-time information about which sites were full, and visitors needed a better way to find what they were looking for. 
In order to do that, though, we needed to undertake a, a, a massive effort to digitize and transform how the cemetery operates, to take a paper-based operation and transform it into an industry-leading, uh, technology-driven, uh, analytics-driven organization. So Arlington National Cemetery, a place so rich in history, such a reflection of our past, took a huge step into the future. We had a couple comprehensive efforts. So we had a record digitization. Take those indexes, that location index, and that personnel alphabetical listing, and transcribe the data off of those cards. Um, then we had a, a photographing effort where we had to literally take a photograph, and we used soldiers from the 3rd Infantry Regiment, the Old Guard, who also have soldiers that watch the Tomb of the Unknowns. Uh, they, throughout the summer, established a baseline of over 260,000 photographs of headstones. So that was the second effort. And then the third effort is literally to create the digital plot maps and the digital uh, headstone points. And that we used a team uh, to go out and literally map to three inches every headstone and feature in the cemetery. With pictures and a precise location of every headstone, Arlington went digital. Now if you want to find someone here, your finger no longer traces a paper map. It slides across your smartphone and download the application for your device. Um, once you're here in the cemetery, then you can actually look up your loved one, uh, and if you don't remember the location, you can look them up by name. If you remember the location, you can look them up by location, and get pinpoint direction to that three-inch accuracy we talked about to your loved one's gravesite, and turn-by-turn -turn navigation, really. Much like you're familiar with using common smartphone mapping platforms, we've built that same environment here at Arlington National Cemetery. The minute you walk into Arlington, type in a name like Frank Buckles, the longest surviving World War I veteran and the smartphone app will show you step by step exactly how to find him. The app is really just one of the many payoffs from the massive digital overhaul at Arlington, a place where history is coming face to face with the future, thanks to the service of those guiding its path. If you can't get excited about working here at our National Cemetery where we honor our veterans uh, and, and their sacrifice to our nation, um, it, just, it, just, it gives me goosebumps just talking about it. Arlington says the benefits of this digital transformation will be far-reaching. The smartphone app will help visitors honor, experience, and explore the cemetery. At the same time, it allows the administration to keep real-time records of what happens today, as well as plan for the future. There are a few places in America that when you're there, you get it. You realize why it's special. Arlington National Cemetery is certainly one of those places. A place where when you walk the rows, you can't help but be taken to the battlefields of Snodgrass Hill, Iwo Jima, the deserts of Iraq, or the highlands of Afghanistan. It's a place where everyone who is there deserves to be there, because in their own way, they are all American heroes. To all of our current service members and veterans, 7 and 4 News would like to express our deepest heartfelt appreciation for your service and your sacrifice. Thank you, and good night. This 7 and 4 News special report, Arlington Cemetery Forever Here, is brought to you commercial free by Kuwaitan Care.